the test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You are going to listen to a conversation between two friends who are discussing the organization of a party. As you listen, answer the questions. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi, Matt. Right on time. Have you been waiting long? Mm, five minutes. The buses were held up on the high street. Otherwise, I would have been early. Yeah, there's something wrong with them today. Yes, I think so. OK, what should we do? Should we go and have a coffee? Yeah, that would be nice. There's that place on the corner over there. It does really nice coffee and cakes and things, and at this time it's usually very quiet, so we'll be able to talk. OK, let's go there then. So, when's the party going to be? Well, it has to be at the end of September, before we all leave for university. We've plenty of time, then. We don't go for another five weeks, do we? Hmm. Well, we haven't really got that much time, if you think about it. There are only a couple of weeks at the beginning of September when all of us are around. Oh, yes, I forgot. Nazrin, Phil and Nicky and all that lot have gone off on holiday. And I'm away for two weeks from tomorrow. So, what does that leave us, then? As far as I know, we're all here between the 19th and the 30th of September. Will Sandra be around then? I know that she has a whole string of family birthdays at that time, and she might not be available. Hmm. Well, let's make a note of that, and we can contact her about it. OK. Shall we settle for the 21st of September, then? What day is the 21st? It's a Saturday. Is that OK? That's fine. Before the conversation continues, look at questions 6 to 10. As you listen to the second part of the conversation, answer questions 6 to 10. For these questions, there are three alternatives, A, B and C. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. And now for the tricky bit. Where are we going to hold it? Well, I spoke to Nikki last week, and she volunteered her place, as they have a huge house and garden. Oh, fantastic. Will her parents be around? Yeah, I think so, but she said they won't mind. Oh, right. Well, my parents wouldn't like it at all. <laughs> Nor mine. <laughs> but is it definite? Yes. When I spoke to her, she said it was definitely on. I'll just have to confirm the dates with her. We thought it would be one weekend in September, so I'll just have to make sure that that one is OK. One thing Nikki suggested, we could have a daytime party, as we could be outside if the weather is fine. Oh, wow. How far out does she live? It's not that far. Do you know where West Road crosses the bridge? Yeah. It's the first house on the right, with that huge drive up to the front door. Oh, right. I know exactly where it is. The road is off the A33 and runs north, then over the bridge and first on the right. I know it. 
Ah, oh, the place is amazing. You know, it has a big swimming pool. Does everyone know where she lives? Most of her friends do, but not all. But it doesn't matter, as we can put this map Nikki sent me in with the invitation. How shall we do the invitation? We can do it on the computer. I can scan the map, and we'll put it all onto an A4 page. Is this the address? Can I just write the address down? It's ninety-three West Road, and I'll take the phone number. It's four double seven one three zero. Right. There's one other thing. Yes. We're all giving ten pounds towards refreshments and food. There'll probably be a barbecue. Do you think that's enough? Oh right. Yeah, that's fine. And everyone will have to help tidy up afterwards, including the boys. <laughs>Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk on New Zealand radio about an art sale which is being held to raise money for charity. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. One of the most anticipated art events in Christchurch is the Charity Art Sale, organised this year by Neil Curtis. Neil, tell us all about it. Well, Diane, this looks like being the biggest art sale yet. And the best thing about it is that the money raised will all go to charity. So what you probably want to know first is where it is. Well, the pictures will be on view all this week, most of them at the Star Gallery in the shopping mall. But we have so many pictures this year that we're also showing some in the cafe next door. So do drop in and see them any day between 9 and 5. Now, if you're interested in buying rather than just looking, and we hope a lot of you will be, the actual sale will take place on Thursday evening, with sales starting at 730 Refreshments will be available before the sale, starting at 6.30. We've got about 50 works by local artists showing a huge range of styles and media, and in a minute I'll tell you about some of them. You're probably also interested in what's going to happen to your money once you've handed it over. Well, all proceeds will go to support children who are disabled, both here in New Zealand and also in other countries. So you can find an original painting, support local talent and help these children all at the same time. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. Now, let me tell you a bit about some of the artists who have kindly agreed to donate their pictures to the charity art sale. One of them is Don Studley, 
who has a special interest in the art sale because his five-year-old daughter was born with a serious back problem. After an operation earlier this year, she's now doing fine, but Don says he wants to offer something to help other less fortunate children. Don is totally self-taught and says he's passionate about painting. His paintings depict some of our New Zealand birds in their natural habitats. One relative newcomer to New Zealand is James Chang, who came here from Taiwan nine years ago at the age of 56. Mr Chang had 13 exhibitions in Taiwan before he came to live here in Christchurch, so he's a well-established artist and art has been a lifelong passion for him. His paintings are certainly worth looking at. If you like abstract pictures with strong colour schemes, you'll love them. Natalie Stevens was born in New Zealand, but is exhibited in China, Australia and Spain. As well as being an artist, she's a website designer. She believes art should be universal, and her paintings use soft colours and a mixture of media. Most of her pictures are portraits, so watch out. Some of them may even be friends of yours. And then we have Christine Shin from Korea. Christine only started to learn English two years ago when she arrived in New Zealand, but she's been painting professionally for over ten years, and she sure knows how to communicate strong messages through the universal language of art. She usually works from photographs and paints delicate watercolours, which combine traditional Asian influences with New Zealand landscapes, giving a very special view of our local scenery. Well, that's all I have time to tell you now, but as well as these four, there are many other artists whose work will be on sale, so do come along on Thursday. We accept cheques, credit cards or cash. And remember, even if you don't buy a picture, you can always make a donation. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. Making the decision to stop is just the first step. Yet if you follow these guidelines, no matter how tough it may be to begin with, rest assured. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Good afternoon. Welcome to Stop Smoking Now. You're all here today because you've decided to stop smoking. However, making the decision to stop is just the first step. Yet if you follow these guidelines, no matter how tough it may be to begin with, rest assured you will be on your way to becoming what you want to be, an ex-smoker. The first thing to remember is that there is not only one way. What I'll give you today are various methods you can choose from. They all work and they can all help. The first method I would recommend is based on something we all have, but in different degrees, namely willpower. Of course, just making the decision to stop is an enormous act of willpower alone. But what exactly does this mean? It means having a strong mind waking up every morning and telling yourself that you will not have that cigarette, no matter how much you may want one. To do this successfully, you really have to be determined to stay focused. You need to be in the right frame of mind. 
But this isn't as easy as it may sound, and it may mean doing other things to take your mind off having that cigarette, particularly when the urge is strong. I found that different things can help you do this, like taking up a hobby or having a smoking buddy, someone you can phone up when the going gets tough, a friend who can help you think about something else. Remember that each time you don't have a cigarette, you will feel better and stronger. Of course, this method does not work for everyone, but there are other ways to help keep you on track. Another way is to use smoking aids. There are many types, so find one that suits you best. Take, for example, nicotine patches. You put one on every day, and it gives you a controlled nicotine dose. Basically, you keep reducing the amount until your body stops craving nicotine. As your body gets used to less nicotine, you may experience withdrawal symptoms. Don't worry about feeling embarrassed; people will notice because many nicotine patches are see-through. So, where do you get them? Well, you can buy them from your local pharmacy or supermarket. You can also ask your GP for a prescription. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Another method that is becoming more popular is alternative therapies. Giving up smoking is not only difficult for your body but also your mind, as the emotional stress can be really severe. One therapy that springs to mind is acupuncture. This can help you relax, calm you down, making you much more likely to want to give up. Acupuncture usually lasts between fifty to ninety minutes. As your body and mind become stronger, you should need fewer sessions. The good thing about acupuncture is that it takes harmful toxins caused by smoking out of your body, and I'm sure you'll all like this. It does not increase your appetite, so giving up smoking using this method means you won't put on weight. It can take as few as five acupuncture sessions to cure you, but of course this depends on the type of person you are. I suppose one of the biggest advantages of using this method is that there are almost no withdrawal symptoms because it works from the inside. What I mean by this is that acupuncture takes away your wanting to smoke, and this feeling, on top of the feeling of calmness, stays with you after the treatment is over. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which method you choose. What's important is that you make the decision and then stick to it, no matter what. If you give up, think of the money you'll be saving. There is no better time to start than today. You can kick the habit for good. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a career's advice talk on working freelance. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Working for an employer in a 9 to 5 job has long been the accepted norm. However, this could soon be set to change. A rising level of unemployment, combined with a sense of disillusionment amongst employees with their workaday lives, is at the root of this modern day revolution in the workplace. Now, there is a growing trend amongst people of all ages and from all walks of life to opt for freelance work rather than working for an employer. It sounds a risky option and a potentially stressful one, but on the whole, the benefits of freelancing seem to vastly outweigh those of working for someone else. In fact, recent research has shown that those who quit their jobs to work for themselves are the country's happiest and most productive workers. A study conducted by Dr Jonathan Sapsed from Brighton University's Business School, in conjunction with the Arts and Humanities Research Council, looked at a total of 304 freelancers who were pursuing a range of professions in southern England. They found that, far from struggling to get by, many were not only doing well, but excelling in their new professions. So, what are the advantages of freelancing? Well, there are many. One of the most obvious benefits is not having to be answerable to a boss and having to face criticism or unfair demands. In addition, not being based in an office or shared workplace with competitive or difficult colleagues is another bonus. But what is probably the most attractive pull of working freelance is the freedom to determine your own work schedule. You are no longer at the mercy of a timetable dictated to you by your employer. If you have family commitments, these can easily be fitted around your working hours. Furthermore, if you have an off day one day, it's easy to make up time another day without having to face your employer's wrath when you are being less productive than usual. Those who work in creative and digital industries stand to benefit most from working freelance. In these fields, workers are at liberty to choose their ideal working location, as they are not restricted to working in a set place. It really is an ideal lifestyle that many would aspire to if they were more aware of the options available to them. Lastly, to add to an already convincing list of benefits from doing freelance work, there is the financial reward. Freelancers typically work a 38-hour week and earn a median wage of £43,000, well above the national average of £25,000, and are happier than other workers. It seems that people are now catching on to the myriad benefits that come with working as a freelancer. Currently, there are about 31 million people in work in Britain and already 4.6 million are self-employed, thereby displaying the vitality of the freelance economy. In fact, so popular is freelancing becoming that it has even been suggested that the government needs to devise a new tax and other policies to support freelancers. Freelancing would seem to be the future of employment and the way forward. It is certainly well worth considering freelancing if you are doubtful about committing to working in a structured environment and would like more freedom and autonomy in your work. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. I thought I had it figured out Believed in us We were meant to be, no doubt A teenage love Everybody else could see The way we were Living in a fantasy When I came 